Reduce, reuse, recycle. To what extent do Singaporeans embrace the three R's? According to NEA, Singapore households only recycled 19% of their waste in 2015, which dropped from 22% in 2010. This shows a lack of effort in embracing recycling. What are some of the common practices here in Singapore? Let's take a look at what some of my students are up to. Only 7% of plastics are recycled in Singapore. Why are they printing single-sided? Good morning class, welcome to the first sustainability lesson. Today we're going to talk about the three pillars of sustainability, namely the economic, environmental and social pillar. You must remember to do your part to reduce, reuse, and recycle. Okay? Hey, hey, Master. Lah. Hey, wait for a movie already. Oh, go, 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 Hey, the movie was good, sir. Yeah, it was quite scary. Wow, yeah. I know, eh. Wow, serious. Yeah. Hey, wait, I throw this away. Sure, sure, no problem. Remember to do your part to reduce, reuse, and recycle. Okay? Hey, what are you doing? Many times, people do not follow the correct process of recycling. So how many people actually know the correct process? Do you actually like, wash your cans before recycling in the recycling bin? If I have time, then I will like wash it. But normally, I will just throw it inside the bin. I'll wash it. wash it. You know when you throw away like, cans, you have to wash it first before you put it in the recycling bin. I didn't know that. Huh? So troublesome. Ayah, I must well just throw away. Ah, don't throw it away. Why do Singaporeans not recycle? So, do you recycle? No. No. Mm, uh, can you briefly tell us why you don't recycle? Too troublesome. Yeah. But why is it troublesome? Where should I throw this out? NEA's website actually provides a guide on what items are recyclable and what's not. However, this only applies to the large blue recycle bins whereby their recyclable items are not compartmentalized into their respective receptacles. Do you know how to recycle this? I have no idea, but it looks like it's made of paper, so I'm just going to throw it inside the paper bin. I see. Okay, thank you very much. You're actually correct. I do. Am yeah. I? Oh. Yeah. <laughs>
they're done, there's still a lot left. So what? I paid for it. In 2016, 791,000 metric tons of food was wasted in Singapore, and this contributes to 10% of waste in Singapore, of which only 14% of food waste is recycled. So why do Singaporeans waste food? I think it's because Singaporeans can, aff- can afford to waste food. That's why they waste food. Yeah. Uh, I think the most most common reason is because of overeating. Mm, I think. A lot of it has to do with maybe sometimes the taste, sometimes maybe it's too, it's not nice enough and other times it might be due to the fact that the food is cheap. So it's, it's like when you think something is cheap, you wouldn't really think about it being precious or anything. I see, so we take our food for granted. Next time you can order less portion, you know. Okay, fine. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Hey, it's so nice! Oh my god! According to a survey conducted by China News Asia, Singaporeans, you know, um, buy on average 34 pieces of new apparel each year, citing reasons such as discounts. And they discard actually 27 pieces of um, their clothing every year, citing reasons like they no longer fit, their defects, or they just don't like it anymore. Can we go? I'm trying to reuse my old sofa by re-upholstering them. That's why I'm looking at some, you know, some of these DIY products. And I'm actually waiting for my friend who will tell us more about all these different products. Oh, can just throw away and buy new ones at IKEA. Wa. So cheap anyway. Why waste time? That is why we need a change in mindset. The Tackle Medium is one of the several initiatives that has sprung up in recent years to get people to prolong the lifespan of their belongings by reusing them. Project Upcycle by Central Singapore Community Development Council, CDC, conducts workshops on repurposing old items. Since re upholstering is not as difficult as, as it seems, I believe that you know a lot of people are actually doing it. In reality, only a very small portion of Singaporeans take part in such initiatives. Like, um, let's say your pencil case broke, like it's broken. Do you repair it or do you get a new one? Uh, I will get a new one because, like, because I'm worried that if I remake it, then it will spoil again. Do you repair and reuse your belongings? Not really. So when something is spoiled, you just dispose it away? Yeah. Why don't you try to repair it? Very inconvenient and very difficult. Moreover, the planned obsolescence of products such as furniture and electronics make it difficult for people to repair and reuse them. And nobody recycles it here so far, okay? Mm-hmm. For the simple reason being that it's too cheap yeah. and it's too rotten. And nobody wants to recycle mass market. As the quality of products may be questionable, this makes reusing and repairing a secondary choice for consumers. Moreover, the affordable nature of mass market products has actually encouraged people to replace their old and faulty products instead of reusing and repairing them. It's very hard to go into recycling and all that because it's so cheap. Your mentality is cheap. Why would you want to pay $2,000 for a Singapore-made sofa mm. when you can go to IKEA and get it for $500? Evidently, economic factors and inherent structural properties of products make it difficult for people to repair and reuse. So many initiatives, but so little results. It seems that the approach that Singapore is taking is not good enough. It seems that education does indeed create awareness. However, it takes time for behaviour to change. Do we have the time to wait for these behaviours to change? It's high time that the government take a firmer approach towards the three R's by imposing pay-as-you-throw schemes or by rewarding people who practice the three R's.